Hi there, I'm Lena Anani, and you're listening to She Wrote a Book, where I interview amazing women from all over the world who also happen to be published authors. I created this show to educate, entertain, and inspire you to be the voice you want to hear in the world. Now let's get started. You are listening to episode number 88 of She Wrote a Book, and today I'm interviewing Jessica Honnard, author of the book Introversion in the Classroom, How to Prevent Burnout and Encourage Success. Education can be an incredibly draining field, especially for introverts. This book explores the role of introversion within education, classroom strategies that prevent student burnout, and self-care techniques for introverted teachers. Jessie Hunnard is is passionate about helping introverts succeed in high-energy fields, particularly education and entrepreneurship. She spent five years teaching high school in high school English, and now works as a full-time copywriter and advocate for introverts. Again, her book is called Introversion in the Classroom, How to Prevent Burnout and Encourage Success. You can find the link to purchase her book in our show notes for this episode at shewroteabook.com slash 88. So Jessica, it's such a pleasure to have you here as a guest today. Uh, My first question for you is this, what made you want to write and publish this book? Well, I think that, first of all, it's really great to be here today, and I think that this book has kind of been a long, long time coming for me. I was, um, as you said, I'm, I was a teacher for about five years, and I was also obviously a high school student at one point, and both the experience of being a student and a teacher in the classroom, during that process, I kind of realized that I wasn't being personally reached, and when I was a teacher, I realized that my students weren't being fully reached, and Um, You know, teaching is a very collaborative profession, and being a student is very collaborative, and we're told as teachers to include a lot of group work and things that tend to be very extrovert-minded, and I found that a lot of introverted students weren't being reached. So I wanted to create a way where I could help teachers reach both their extroverted students and their introverted students who weren't always getting the support that they needed. So that's great. So your book actually, it's not just for introverts. It actually does touch upon the topic of extroverts as well and how to to make sure that both groups are being equally represented. Yeah, yeah. I really like um, finding balance. And that was really kind of the start of this is finding that balance between extroverts and introverts because we both have something to learn from our opposite. Absolutely. Awesome. When When did you know, like at what point in your life did you realize you were an introvert? I actually didn't realize until after I left teaching, and so I taught for five years, and at the end of the fifth year, I was so exhausted that I just, I knew I had to change something. I wanted to stay in education, though, so I took a job at a museum where I worked in the education department and started leading workshops to teach teachers, and the opportunity to do that where I was in a low-stress version of teaching, I started kind of exploring what burnt me out as a teacher, and I came across Susan Cain's book, Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking, and that book really opened my eyes to what introversion was and the fact that I was one, and not just, and very, very introverted. I was pretty high on the scale, so it really opened my eyes to, oh, this is why I was so exhausted, and if I had taken certain steps as a teacher, I may have been able to prevent that burnout. So I really became passionate about helping people who were currently in the classroom, either teaching or learning, to prevent that burnout themselves. So we've only chatted for like three minutes now, and I've already had a big aha moment. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. (laughs) Um, So there was a part in my there there was a a blip in my my lifetime where I wanted to be a school teacher. Mm-hmm. And um, and I, I enrolled in this program, and it was this, like, aggressive, intensive program where you're studying the coursework, and you're also a student teacher at the same time, instead of studying for a couple of years and then becoming a student teacher. And I lasted a year. I loved it, but I lasted a year, and I and I got sick. I got really, really sick. And, and then at the end of it, I'm like, I don't think it's right for me, but I wanted to be a teacher. I always wanted to be a teacher. And so... Just hearing you say what you said in those first three minutes, I was like, oh, my God, that's exactly why it didn't work, because I'm an introvert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, and it's exhausting. It is. Yeah, it really was. And and I'm like, well, where's the reward in this work? Isn't this work supposed to feel rewarding? And I know people who feel, re- who feel that reward, but it's like the exhaustion and the reward just didn't 
match up. Like you said, there needs to be balance. And while it was rewarding work, I was just drained. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I was sort of in a position, I didn't get the chance to student teach before I started teaching, so I didn't really get the chance to figure that out for myself. I was thrown into the classroom at 21 years old, and I taught uh, high schoolers, so one of my students was actually 20, and I had about 200 to 250 students. Um, And it was just, it it was kind of like hitting a brick wall. (laughs) So I was like, I, I really enjoyed it. I love teaching. I love, you know, whether I'm teaching high school students or adults, I love passing along valuable information, but in that way, it was not, I wasn't giving them my all, so they weren't getting what they needed. Absolutely. Okay, so you and I both know what introverts are, and for the listeners who are introverts, they know what introvert means, but for the benefit of those who aren't quite sure what an introvert is, could you explain to us and let us know what what your definition of introvert is? Yeah, absolutely. So introversion is all about energy and where you get your energy from and where you spend it. I like to kind of compare it to currency. Um, you have kind of a bank of energy that you you spend in certain places, and then you go and you collect energy in other places. And introverts tend to expend a lot of energy when they're around a lot of external stimulation. So, And a lot of people think that this is um, just socialization and talking, which is where kind of the misnomer that introverts are shy come from, but really it's any external stimulation. So like, for example, if you go to the mall and it's really busy and loud and there are a lot of bright lights and noises and it's a very active environment, you don't have to necessarily talk to a single person, but if you're introverted, you may still get drained from that because there's external stimulation. Um, an extrovert, on the other hand, will feel more energized by that sort of an environment. They like a lot of the external uh, stimulation. And so the science of it kind of goes down to um, dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter. And there have been a few studies on this um, that basically kind of the conclusion is that introverts are more sensitive to dopamine, which you get from external stimulation. So the more you're stimulated, the more dopamine you get, and introverts are really sensitive to that. So they only need a little bit whereas extroverts are not quite as sensitive, so they want more of it. So that's kind of the difference, and why it's also why introversion and extroversion aren't black and white. It's not like you're one or the other. You're somewhere on a sliding scale. You can be a little introverted, but sometimes act extroverted. You can be a little extroverted, but have introverted moments. Perfect. That was such a good explanation of it. Thank you so much. Um, and so, um, so knowing that, what do you think about teachers being introverts? Would they make good teachers? Are extroverts maybe better teachers? What are your thoughts on that? Well, the the field itself definitely has more extroverts than introverts. It's the kind of field that extroverts are drawn to because there's a sense of always being on and kind of performing. But um, I think introverts make great teachers. I like to think that I was pretty decent at my job when I was a teacher. Um, And I know a lot of introverts who are very, very successful teachers. And I I think the important thing is if you are an introvert and a teacher, you kind of have a special job of being an advocate for your introverted students. Because just like I didn't know I was an introvert when I was a teacher or a student, most introverted students probably don't know what that means. They just know that they're constantly overwhelmed and burnt out. And, you know, if they really are are kind of nurturing their introversion and tending to their introverted needs, that may mean that they're seen as, you know, nerdy or bookish or weird because it's not what their peer group sees as ideal. So as an, intro, as an introverted teacher, you have this really great opportunity to kind of be a role model for introverted students. And I think that's so important because it is such an environment where teachers are expected to be very outgoing and performing, and then students are at this point where everything is about collaboration and being with your peers and doing group work all the time, and they need to know that it's okay to step back and be alone or in a small group or reflecting and not necessarily on. Awesome. Okay, so so my next question would be then how do you feel like or or when you wrote this book, what was your hope? Who who's who were you hoping would pick up and read your book? Well, when I originally started it, I was kind of um hoping that it would reach 
all teachers, whether they were introverted or extroverted, with the intent of helping them create that balance in their classroom. I had a lot of feedback when I ran a workshop on this topic from extroverted teachers who had no idea that they were isolating their introverted students, and they wanted to find a way to overcome that. So that's kind of the first part of who I want to reach. I want to reach, whether they're extroverts or introverts, people who don't really understand that and want to come into a better knowledge of it and how to support it in the classroom. But the other half of it is the introverted teachers themselves. The other feedback I received when I was leading the workshop was a lot of teachers who found out through my workshop that they were introverts and needed tools to help themselves not burn out or not become overwhelmed. And so I added a third section to the book that was specifically geared towards the introverted teachers and how to avoid burnout, how to avoid overwhelm in this fast-paced, high-energy field that is always demanding that you're on and always demanding that you're doing something more. Um, and so that, those are kind of my two main audiences, and I think they complement each other nicely because I, th I do think that introverted teachers and extroverted teachers make great complements to each other. That's awesome. And of course, I'm like taking everything you're saying and relating it to the the entrepreneur world. It's like, you know, I have friends who are extroverted entrepreneurs and I have friends who are introverted entrepreneurs and and it's interesting it's interesting what I've learned from both both groups. Mm -hmm. Um but I always wonder it's like are are introverts because they get drained so easily? I mean, are they just like destined to fail? I always wonder that because cause it's like, come on, I can't keep up with everyone. <laughs> no, I don't think I don't think they're destined to fail. In fact, I think that one of the um one of the big hurdles that introverts need to overcome is thinking of their introversion as a weakness when really it's their superpower. It's the thing that, you know, that it's one of the unique things that they bring to the table. And, you know, being an introvert doesn't necessarily mean that you're less of an entrepreneur or less of a teacher. It just means that you need to approach it in a way that works for you. So maybe that isn't going to 80 networking events in a month. Maybe it's instead trying to find a way to be successful in the online space because technology can be a great way to get yourself out there as an introvert in a less draining way. Um, or if you do go to networking events, maybe it means that you choose very carefully which ones you well, which ones will have the greatest advantage to you and not just going to any of them and, because you enjoy that socialization. Um, I think it just is about being strategic and playing to your strengths. Uh, introverts have a lot of strengths and their in kind of naturally introspective nature I think leads to them being well, a lot more strategic sometimes and also more intuitive. So those two um, components can really help their introversion become more of a strength than a weakness. Yay, I love that. Awesome. So, <laughs> Don't worry, so you're not going to fail. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I feel better. I feel so much better now. Thank you. Um, so what do you love most about being an author? Uh, I think, well, for me, when I left the classroom, it was because, partially because I was burnt out and partially because every year I was reaching about 200 students. I wanted to teach teachers because then when I was teaching 50, 60 teachers, up to 100 teachers in, a, in an entire summer, I was reaching the, those 100 teachers, but also all of their students. So I was widening my reach. So in writing this book, I'm widening my reach again. And I love the ability for my message, something that I find really important to my own identity and success, but also the success of other teachers out there and other entrepreneurs out there, to, to re have that message reach so much further and be to have anyone be able to pick it up and read it and learn about it and engage in that conversation. Um, and I, I started, a, I have a Facebook group for introverted entrepreneurs and educators and just looking at some of the conversations in there and some of the people who are coming to terms with their introversion and how to use it as their superpower is really empowering. And those are connections that I never would have made if I didn't go ahead and write this book. That is awesome. So, Jessica, thank you so much for being our special guest today. We will have a link to your book in the show notes for this episode. And our listeners can find that at shewroteabook.com slash 88 to learn more about our author and her awesome, awesome book, which I can't wait to read. Um, <laughs> Jessica, thank you so much for being our guest today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great.
Thank you for listening to She Wrote a Book. If you enjoyed this episode, then subscribe now so you can automatically get access to all new episodes and feel free to share your inspired thoughts with us in the comments too. I'd love to hear from you. Until then, may you always feel good and make magic.